Tonight the Stars Revolt by Gardner F. Fox, originally published in Planet Stories, March 1952. Read by John Gill. Part 8. Laughter came out of them from the illy-lit interior of the tavern, together with the dry smell of wine and the stench of sweating flesh. Tandor kicked the oak door open and went along the wall with his burden. A girl with a rag around her middle ran for Angus, tipsily pressing wet lips on his. She threw up a wooden goblet. The red wine splashed over its rim, crying, The anvil! To Red Angus, the anvil! The only friend we have! The roar echoed in his ears as Angus stepped into the little side room. Tandor kicked a chair towards Angus, reaching for a wooden pitcher. He growled. Are you going hunting for the book? Angus stretched out his legs and dragged a full goblet towards him. He stared at the dark liquor. Finally, he said, Yes, I'm going. Why? Because I've seen the way they live in the upper city. I've seen the life they lead, and I've seen the life those people out there in the big room lead. Tandor made a rumbling sound in his throat. You don't think they'll appreciate your changing it, do you? Angus looked thoughtfully. He smiled. I know what our race is heading towards now. We will be like Stazor, the man behind the veil, eventually. The longer the dictator stays in power and others like him, the longer will the rest of us be kept from that goal. Tandor grinned like a wolf. Some men like to be martyrs. It's a weakness of the brain. He scowled and brought the flat of his ham-like hand down on the wooden tabletop. I say it's madness. Let the Herak and the Dictor slit each other's throats. Let's go back to the star trails, Angus. Out there a man can breathe and stretch himself. Angus shook his head. Take the ship yourself. Go raiding if you want. I stay. I want to answer a question. What question? Why is science? Why? That's crazy. Now I know it. Of all the stupid questions... Science is an art designed to better the life standards of the patrician class. There. That answer you? I say science is something that should benefit all. Why do we have torches while the hierarchy and the partitions use illumilamps and incandescent walls? Why don't we have stoves instead of hearths? Or electronizers instead of percussion guns? Tandor smirked. It's safer. Angus got to his feet and walked about the smoky oak beam room. In the reddish light, his naked chest and thickly muscled arms seemed coated with crimson. The short crop of red hair on his rounded square jaw skull aided to the illusion. He planted his hands on his hips and stood in front of his lieutenant. I turned pirate when the last dictator executed my father for leniency with his servants. The dictator said he was undermining governmental discipline. I took my mother and fled into space. I found a safe spot on Yasinan. I built a pirate empire with your help. I'd offer up all the wealth we've amassed at Yasinan to smash the setup here. Tandor spat on his hand and rubbed his palm on the flat of his bald dome. He said dryly, You make me mad, Angus. You aren't satisfied with things. Always you have to change them. Isn't life full enough for you now? Angus ignored him. If I could get the Book of Nard and free Moana and take her away to safety, we might stand a chance. If we could develop science undisturbed by Yasinan, we could do it. Why fret about Moana? She became my vow companion. You know what that means to somebody like the Dictor? Angus slapped his broad leather belt decisively. I'll do it. I'll go in his globe ship and try to find the book. Tandor, you stay here. Raise men and fight for us. The big man with the bald head nodded gloomily. He poured wine from the wooden tankard down the brimming goblet in one long gulp. He wiped his lips on the palm of his hand and rubbed it dry in his bald head. I hear you. I think you're mad, but I hear you. What are you going to do with that? His thumb jerked at the limp scientist in the long cowled robe. Angus shrugged. He'll come around. And when he does, I'll pretend I fought off his assailant. Meanwhile, you find out which globe ship he means to give me. Can you do that? The big man rumbled. I'll find out without leaving the room. He lifted his voice and bellowed. When the door opened, a red face peered in. Tandor grinned. Find that wharf rat Plisket and send him in here. Plisket limped in, grinning at Angus, bobbing his head. 
His eyes opened when he heard what Tandor wanted. He chuckled. The hierarchy plot like a pack of fools. Everybody outside the Citadel hates them. It happens I hate the Dictone more. They gave me gold to build a ship. The skimmer? asked Tandor. That wonder boat you were telling me about? It is a wonder boat. It incorporates the... Never mind the details, rapped Angus, leaning his palms on the table. Is that a boat the hierarchy want me to use? It must be. It's the only one uncharted. And Angus, if you are to control it, remember that it will submerge, and it has four speeds. Two more than Tender slapped the table with his palm, making the goblets bounce. Enough! Enough! Plisket, your tongue wags like a hound's tail. Angus, are you ready? Angus stretched his tall, heavily shouldered body. He went and bent his lean height over the shallow breathing scientist and swung him up in a fireman's hitch. He walked firmly, steadily, as he headed for the oaken door. The end. Thank you for listening.